Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at an object that is in a local space and it wants to work with objects that are in world space. So press the G key to move this object right about here and uh, go ahead and uh, zoom in a bit to shift middle mouse button to pan. I'm just going to zoom out a bit more. Now go ahead and click on this object. So this object right now is stuck in local space. What that simply means is that if we press the R key to rotate this object, let's say like this, when we change its X value, it will only move according to its local X axis. Right, so this is what this is representing. The orientation of its local coordinate system, its local space. Okay, so this is what this does. Now when we change the Z value, it will only move along its local z-axis. Now if we want to move this object in the 3D view along the global x-axis and the global z, we have no other choice right now but to click over here and change the 3D manipulator to global. And the 3D manipulator only works by clicking on these arrows, right? Click on the x to move along the global x or the global z. But again, if we go back over here, change the X value, it will still move along the local X and the global Z. So this is what I mean by this object is stuck in local space. So here we're just going to switch to local. Now if we click on this object, which is operating in world space, if we press the R key to let's say rotate it like this. Now when we change its X value, it will only move along the global X and the global Z. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Now go ahead and click on this object, go to the constraints tab and over here we're going to do copy location and just select on this object. Now you already know what world space and world space is, right? It's just going to use the global coordinate system and find the object that's operating in world space, give its location to the object that's operating in local space. But here we're just evaluating in world space, so this is why this object appears over here. So this is a very simple concept to understand. So here, the owner object we know has a parent, so it's obviously operating in local space. So let's go ahead and switch this. Okay, so it's going to appear over here. Now, what I want you to see over here is what's actually going on. Notice that over here, if we go to the grease pencil and over here, You'll see that if we draw a line on the X axis and then draw a line from its origin up along the Z, draw a perpendicular line, this is what it is. Now if we do the same thing over here on its local, you'll see that it's the same exact thing, right? It's a one-to-one -one match on how these coordinate systems are working. I'm going to do X to get out of the grease pencil, okay? So let's just go ahead and remove this. Now notice that when we click on this object, remember we're evaluating this object in world space. When we change its X value to move along the global X axis, this object is going to move along its local X axis. In the same way, if we move this object along its global Z axis, this object is going to move along its local z-axis, okay? Very straightforward concept. Now, over here, when we click on its local z, you can see that it's moving diagonally according to the world coordinate system. So this object is going to also move diagonally. Now, if we want to see where exactly is this object going, we can very easily, having this object selected, just do copy rotation and over here select this object and of course here we're going to say that okay you're operating in roll space so bring that rotation back to us in local space so now if you click on this object move along the z you'll see that how this object is moving along the z and the x right we can of course press the r key to rotate it doesn't actually matter what we do it will always work I'm going to press the G key to move this here. So what we're going to do is actually create a, a pointing device. We don't want to rotate this object. We just want to create a pointing device 
to see where this object is going. I want you to go ahead and zoom in. Now, the thing about this concept of parent-child relationships is that once a parent-child relationship is established, you really cannot take an outside object and force it to somehow use the local coordinate system that belongs to this object, right? You cannot insert that object into the local coordinate system because the parent-child relationship has already been established between this object and this object. So this is where we now have to use additional parent-child relationships to allow us to do this. So the first thing that I want you to do is go ahead and turn this off. Okay, now here I just want you to do Alt-R-G-S to reset this object and click on the, uh, the red arrow and move this to the right. Now if we want to be able to use this local coordinate system, we have no other choice but to create a duplicate of this object. So just do Shift-D and go ahead and put it over here. Do Alt-G to reset its location and Alt-R to reset its rotation and press the S key to scale it down. Go ahead and zoom in and press the G key. Now because we duplicated this object, this object is obviously going to work in the same local coordinate system that this object is using, right? See? So this means that we can bring now an outside object and really just make it a child of this object. This is how we're going to create our pointing device to see where this object is pointing when we are rotating it, okay? So to understand this, what I want you to do is do Shift S and do cursor to select it. So it'll bring the 3D cursor on this. Now we're going to do a shift A and just add arrows and press the S key to scale this quite a bit over here, okay? Now we need to align this object that is obviously operating in world space to this object that is operating in local space. All we have to do is click on this, press the shift key down, click on this, go over here, go to transform and do align to transform orientation. Okay, now this is aligned. So this gives us the ability to click on this object first, which will be the child, press the shift key down, click on this one. Now do control P and create a parent-child relationship. So what this means is that we're not going to be working with this object, but we're going to be working with this object because this object has access to the local coordinate system that of course belongs to this object, okay? Now remember, when you create a parent-child relationship, the center of the 3D grid is being handed off to the parent. So if you click this, do Alt-G, of course it's going to come over here. Do Control z to undo this. So always remember that about parent-child relationships, about how this concept works with this uh, uh, center of the 3D grid that gets handed off to the parent. Anyways, now what we're, what we're going to do is click over here and over here because we duplicated it, we have the constraint already so we can use this. Just remove this. Now of course we're going to change this to local space and local space and uh, go ahead and click on uh, this object and turn this on. Right, so this means that when we click on this object and move it, this pointing device is always going to travel with it. Remember, we're always working with this object. Now go ahead and click on this object and now turn it back on, okay? So now all we have to do is uh, click on this object and over here do copy rotation and copy the rotation of uh, this object. And of course say, okay, the rotation in world space needs to come back into local space. So this gives us the ability to press the R key to rotate and actually see where this object is going to go. So if we click on this Z, you can see that it's going to travel along this Z and X. See? And of course, just like before, if we change the X value, this object is simply going to move along its X and Z. So this is a very powerful concept that allows you to understand how world space and local space concepts work in a blender, okay? So anyways, that's how that works. So what I want you to do over here, now notice that we already know how world space and world space works. 
So what we're going to do is force this object that only knows how to operate in world space and make this object look at it as if it had a parent-child relationship going on, meaning that it's going to get its own local space. So when we do that, first of all, this object is going to move. I'm going to explain that, okay? Now the question is that when you do this, where is the local coordinate system for this object, just like how this object has it, okay? So this is going to get a bit tricky to understand, but what Blender is basically going to do is going to take a look at this object, look at its local axis, you see the Z and X, and going to make that its local coordinate system. And the local axis that used to be this Z and X will now become the X axis and the Z axis that is being displayed on the 3D grid, meaning that that local axis, axis is now a static. So to understand this concept, do shift C to place the 3D cursor in the center and just zoom back in. So we're going to expose the local coordinate system that this object is using. So just do shift A and here we're just going to add arrows and press the S key to scale this quite a bit over here, okay? All we have to do is go to the constraints, do copy rotation and copy the rotation of this object. Now this is very important, okay? Now, when you do it, when you force this object to look at an object that exists in world space, make it use local space, what happens is that the Z that is being displayed over here will always be aligned to the Z on this. Now notice that when we click on this object, press the R key to rotate, see how the, uh, it's, uh, local coordinate is rotating this is how it will always work what exactly does this mean so if we rotate this see if we bring the z over here just like this it's also happening to this object okay i'm going to click on this object do alt r to reset its rotation see how this z is aligned to this z it's the same thing so if we rotate this object like this and look at the origin point where it is, okay, along the X, it's also happening to this, meaning that if we go to the grease pencil and do line, you can see that over here, this is the X and draw a line over here, see? So it's the same thing over here, along the X, a Z, okay? So this is why when you rotate this object, Blender is actually moving this object, right? To make sure that it's always aligned correctly. That's what's going on, okay? So that's what that is. So I'm going to just make sure that it's rotated like this and let's just go ahead and remove the grease pencil. Now the question is that, okay, so when we do it this way, when we click on uh, this Z, right? Which is now working like the local coordinate system. When we do this Z, this object, see, regardless of how you rotate it over here, will always move along its local Z. And when we move this along its X, this object will move along its local X. So now the question is, well, the local axis that used to be the Z and X has now become the grid. So this is the, the, the red line over here. That's become its local, right? So here we have to see that, okay, well, if we move this object along its X, it's really now acting like the local X, right? So how do we see this on this object? So all we have to do is click on invert. Now, when we click this and move this along the X, you'll see that over here it's pointing. We are moving this object on the X and Z. See, it has nothing to do with rotating this object. You can rotate it let's say this way over here. When we click over here, do X, that's how it moves. Now the question is, why did we invert this? Well, it's actually very easy, right? Take a look at this. I'm gonna actually press, uh, click on this object and bring it close to its local coordinate system, this object over here. See, over here, when we look at the its Z, right? We know that if we, 
go to the origin point and do the Z, do our parallel. This is where the Z is. Okay. Now, if you look at the Z over here on its uh, match it with its local coordinate system, this is where the Z is, right? So where is the local Z for this? Of course, it's this blue line, right? So here we're just going to do this. Just draw a line straight up. See how this is? So if you look at the act, the pointing device that's representing that blue line that we drew over here, it's over here, right? Meaning that what I'm saying is, look, it's to the left. Look, it's to the left. Okay, this is why we had to invert that. Okay, so that's how this works. You can rotate it anywhere that you want and press the G key. Okay, so now you've seen how this idea works. Now the question is that, okay, well, we know that we've seen world and world, right? We've seen world and local. Now we've seen local and local. Now what happens when we switch this to world? Okay. How is this going to work? So first I want you to press the G key and just move it so it comes over here, okay? So this is going to be pretty straightforward, right? This is still operating in local space. Now first of all, go ahead and click this little guy over here and all you have to do is over here uh, change this to world, right? Because we switched that to world. Now over here, if we click this, if we move along the X over here, you'll notice that this object is now moving along the global X. Actually, this over here, you can press the H key to hide it. It doesn't count, right? See, this X will move this object along the global X axis and clicking on this will move it along the global Z axis. Now, if we move this along the X axis, which is working on its local, this is where this is pointing. And over here is a Z. See? So this is how this concept works between world and a local space. I'm just going to do Alt-H to bring that guy back. Okay? So make sure that you understand what I've shown you here. You might have to do this lesson a dozen times right do it so you can start to see a pattern in your mind as to what is world space and local space and how we can work with these objects like this so anyways i'm just going to go ahead and now just uh, reload this file and i'll see you in the next lesson thank you